Hello there. We're going to go over this video. Um, a long. This is a long version of the video at Las Caletas. It's in the municipality called Cabo Corrientes in Jalisco, Mexico. This is just um, south of, of Puerto Vallarta. The, this uh, Cabo Corrientes municipality starts off by Boca de Tomatlán, south of Boca de, uh, Boca de Tomatlán, southwest. Here we're at Las Caletas, walking along, along this path. After um, leaving the pier, we're getting off the, the, the bay cruise boat, a ship or whatever you want to call it. And um, just before getting off, they have a, a little show with some parrots that fly around. They're very colorful, big uh, cars. I don't remember what they're called, but there's very big colorful parrots with brilliant, vivid colors. So you walk along the edge here, uh, getting closer to the the areas where you have both the beaches, restaurants, and the activities. No? In this case, we'll go first by the. Well, they normally have like um, people along the way. I've seen people like uh, dancers and uh, uh, what was a mermaid one time. It 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 uh, changes in time. You sometimes you can't even see them. They're like camouflaged. One looked like a lizard, I think, or an iguana. Anyway, here we're getting to the, the gift shop. And then later on, we'll go by the, the first uh, open-air restaurant. You can see the hammocks here along the, uh, along the edge. There are quite a few of those. The idea is that you just enjoy them and relax and enjoy the sea and so on. This is a gift shop. And, well, Las Caletas, to get to Las Caletas, you have to do it through a tour. Because not only the restaurants but also the bars are all open and, and, uh, and open bars and open restaurants and everything is uh, what would you say available free of charge but that could only be <laughs> managed if everybody that's going here pays no so it, you can only get here to las caletas through vallarta adventures the person the the tour operator that uh, as this beach in concession. So this is the first little restaurant I went by and had a, a little breakfast before continuing the trip. And there was a little wait. This is pre-COVID, so you see nobody with masks. And here I already ate my breakfast and off I go to see the rest of the, the, of the La Escaleta. This building here is one of the original buildings that were uh, that John Houston had built when he was staying here and um, uh, there's not much left of his presence other than these buildings and there's a small little hall with a few photographs and uh, I imagine things he left behind when he left the Las Caletas in, in the early 1980s John Houston stayed here in uh, in Puerto Vallarta after filming yeah. the night of the iguana mm -hmm. and uh, but he didn't well the house he was staying at Kimberly Casa Kimberly was um, <laughs> given over to the Burton Taylor couple no? to Richard and Elizabeth Taylor <laughs> Richard Burton and uh, he then found out about this place further south didn't like very much I, I don't think he was very much of a. Maybe he's not wasn't really social, but I think he was more. He liked his privacy. He had this. He didn't like the to be um, among a, l a large amount of uh, unknown people and so on. So he, he liked his privacy. He liked people, but he would invite them. He would have them over, but he wouldn't. He didn't want to live in big cities or big towns or be harassed by reporters and things like that so I think he liked Las Caletas and moved here in the early in the mid 70s he started building um, this uh, his getaway here in Las Caletas so here we see another the second house this second building in the background you can see here in the photo the one in the middle is the one we were at the restaurant and this one here is the one that sort of appears sideways on the photograph this was his um, restaurant I mean not the restaurant he's a yeah. dining room yeah, you. and um, he had there was a kitchen here and mm -hmm. a yeah. freezer room <coughs> um, 
he kept it everything working with it. they had two generators that's how they were able to have a, um, a refrigerated room for his um, foods and meats and it's been modified with in time but I think this was the di- this was the original dining area and here's what they call the John Houston Hall no? you can see some old faded <laughs> not even photographs I think they're just reproduction reproductions a few implements and lamps and so on and here he lived let me see at least from mid 70s to the early 80s so he must have lived in Las Caletas for around at least six four some eight years in total maybe a little bit more eight maximum 10 years because he, here you can see a photograph of him yeah, while, while he was at Las Caletas and that's uh, I think it was from the late 70s that photograph and so he enjoyed this place and stayed here for almost 10 years and then had to go because he had a lung sickness emphysema and that needed uh, treatment and he needed to be close to hospital so he plus his uh, movie he was making movies so almost to, to uh, almost until he died no? so he, he needed to be in, in, in the states uh, and other places for the filming no? so he ended up leaving in the mid 80s I think 84 85 and uh, then never came back or if he came back it was just temporarily but he died in ni- in 1989 from what I remember so um, that means he, he, he left this place it was also only leased this area it was was not his property mm-hmm. he leased mm-hmm. the area from the Chacala Chacala uh, natives that had a concession given by the government of a mm-hmm. long piece of the coast including Las Animas, uh, Quimixto and uh, all the way to Yelapa was a concession given by the government to the Chacala in, 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 the, in well, not Indians, natives um, and they then gave out concessions so people could either build and live in, in those in wha- the beaches they determined no? but anything they built there anything they created would be left to the community once they, the lease was over. No? So it would normally be in 10-year uh, leases and could open for renewal. No? In this case, I think uh, Houston only had a 10-year lease and then it was given back. So oh yes. in the mid-80s, this land and the buildings he established here returned to the Chacala indigenous community and uh, then later on I think in the 90s I don't know exactly the date uh, Vallarta Adventures got the concession and uh, built upon or expanded upon what was already built here so here we're seeing different uh, restaurant areas there's a the roof area and then down underneath there was this other restaurant area it's relatively um, empty because people mostly use this at night for the uh, what's it called rhythms of the night event at night in, in the, of course in the nighttime where they have the show uh, a very beautiful show uh, and uh, people eat dinner and have a in a very romantic setting and enjoy the las caletas area in, in the nighttime too. so here we're going we're going along the edge we're going towards uh, the beach areas, which are there's a relax there's two or three areas with beaches, and this is uh, we're going towards one of them, no? the most the one with that has the activities. This one here, where we are right. There's a big uh, building here. Not sure if this is an, an, an original one. But it looks quite in the style of the other one, so it might might just be a, a newer building that followed the architectural design of the other original, the, the ones that John Houston built. So different areas with sort of seats where you can lie down, ha- hammocks, and uh, here we can see the, the, the bay itself with these small well, the stand-up paddles. And there are these small little, uh, what do you call those? Pontoons or 
Here's the sun. Like uh, balsas in here. In Spanish, I don't know what that is. But these floating uh, uh, terraces. <laughs> have to look it up and uh, you can swim out there and, and relax there on, the, on them in the middle of the in the middle of the water no? here they also have an area for food some, have some uh, souvenirs and things they sell here plus there's a little bar on the beach itself from here up the stairs you can get your uh, snorkel equipment if you're going out I did that and um, so it's up here you have lockers and they they require an id or a hotel key and they give you the and they give you the equipment that you can use then for for a snorkel tool that's it they're up to the right i'm going behind behind here it's not didn't go directly there when it did that little trip later you can see different air, uh, drink uh, food and drinking areas here does look a little like the, if it was an original this looks a little bit strong the building might be an original building maybe the the sleeping areas for the for John Houston the only thing is that because it's a little far far away from the dining area you could maybe think that it wasn't used by John Houston because he was it was uh, relatively weak in his last in his later years now. so anyway there's a lot of path pathways we'll be following I, I, I didn't get to go all over them yeah, but I went over the, the most important ones the ones that connect the beach with the with the water park and um, here we're going behind the house and going back to the beach and then following along the edge Las Caletas as uh, I don't think I mentioned it it's a more or less a 45 uh, minute trip, maybe an hour, from the harbor area down to Las Caletas and the pier they have here. This is the activities beach, they call it. There's a few uh, statue, uh, statue sculptures along the way. And there are different... Um, well, you call them. You have you, you have access to stand up paddle, snorkeling, and I think a few other uh, activities. I didn't try them all. Ka ka kayaks, kayaks, kayaks. Oh. And here we're going along the edge. Here we are. Uh, if we continue, we'll get to the what normally is the most photographed area where they have these nice hammocks right over the. Uh, the nice water and there's a hanging bridge and a f a further along another very nice beach area with hammocks and uh, a bar that, that you can enjoy there so this is looking back at the beach the beach club they call it the sports center is uh, where they have the lockers and then this is uh, these, this um, this path goes along the edge and then goes up towards the water park. Yeah. Here we're going towards uh, the hanging bridge too. There's some hammocks there, very nice, and then the some a staircase up towards the, the hanging bridge. Obviously, not the the easiest area for people that have um, mobility issues so no what we call that? no wheelchairs uh, maybe if you have issues with your knees you'd have to stay on the on the main beach by the restaurant in the beginning there's one uh, one beach there you can relax on Nice little setting there for relaxing. They call it Las Caletas Beach Hideaway you know, during the day and rhythms of the night 
as galetas Savia, que é o the name of the show, for the night tour. You know, uh, currently two of uh, John Houston's uh, son and daughter are famous, very well known, Angelica Houston and, and Danny Houston. Danny Houston recently in, in what was it, Wonder Woman, is the villain. Uh, he's also been, I saw him recently in another movie. No, it's a series called Succession. He's one of the one of the businessmen consultants that appears there at the moment or what the series sorry and um, Angelica Houston she uh, mentioned that he, her father enjoyed his years here in Las Canetas he said he he found great happiness in Las Canetas in his last years he enjoyed the jungle the sea and the whole thing being lit by stars but um, yeah, you have to imagine this place totally I mean, free of people and you build your house here and you, you don't have any access to electricity. You have to have generators if you want electricity, uh, candlelight, lamps, uh, beach, uh, campfires. It must have been incredible. Really. Even nowadays, I mean, with all the human presence and it, it still is a beautiful place now. so he really found his little paradise for his last years here on earth here we're arriving at this little the, the last little beach along the edge further to the um, east you'll find more um, you'll find the water park and there's a, an area where they, ha where they have this uh, sea lions and uh, manta rays and things like that um, so this is the, the actual actually the last piece of beach there's a little arch there I didn't visit I should have visited do that next time and oh there's yes. a little bar here yeah. and then you go along the edge climbing up over the the, the the hill here and you'll find more places you can rest along the way which we'll see now In the past, uh, people would go to Boca de Tomatlan, in the case of John Houston, no? and he'd take uh, uh, his own speedboat there from Boca de Tomatlan to Las Galetas. No? Uh, the order of the beaches south of Boca de Tomatlan are uh, Las Animas, then comes Quimixto, then comes uh, Las Galetas, Majahuitas, and another popular visit, uh, beach to visit is Yelapa. So as you see, the beaches are short, small, some smaller than others, but they're all incredibly beautiful. The services or the activities offers he offered here are mostly, as I say, snorkeling, paddleboarding, ca kayaking. They have some guided uh, nature walks. There's a spa, a spa on the, on the hilltop. They have an orchidarium, an aviary, a deer sanctuary. They offer yoga, cooking classes. I think kids can enjoy you know, playing around with, um, what do you call that? Ceramics, like ceram no, uh, pottery. Yeah. And um, they have a, a, a sea lion encounter. On the, they have a wa like a, a water park type thing with a, with a slide. A, a big, and then they have this like a uh, zip line that goes into the into the ocean. <laughs> a little bit. It's mostly for that's more for teenagers or those that can take it. It's a little more active and extreme. And they have a kids' adventure park too. Yeah, where they have hanging bridges, zip lines, smaller ones of course, the Tarzan swing, donkey rides, and they have some fun with animals like uh, monkeys and parrots, even uh, a boa construction, 
constrictor, uh, highly trained boa constrictor, I imagine, <laughs> if you're going to have them close to kids. Um, and then there's, yes, what they call the Teen Adventure Cove, is uh, what we're going to visit after this place here, where they have um, a zip line, say step up, a water slide called Rattlesnake, and a banana. I think the, the it's where they, they fall on top of this big pillow and bounce off. I'm not totally sure it's, it's used now because I heard some, somebody had an accident there. But um, at least that's what I saw when I was there. As I mentioned, there's a, a nighttime tour called Rhythms of the Night, Night Savia that includes not only the dinner and drinks but also the show. It's very well received and uh, very, well, very well reviewed. In my time, when I went to the show with my wife, it was also very nice, but it wasn't as, as um, what would you say? It was being developed. No, it's, it was on the way. Now it's a really established show. And um, they have very, very, very professional artists that, uh, it's a little bit like a Cirque du Soleil yeah, type of show. Um, they, they do mention though, that the show's creator, Gilles saint Croix, has been involved with creating Cirque du Soleil since its inception 50 years ago. So there is a relationship now. In the past, it was more, I imagine, not related to, the, to that uh, circus, but it was still impressive and very nice. So they've just gotten better with time, I imagine. This is the last uh, resting area. On this side of the of the bay, there's um, here you can see the marine encounter and teen adventures by going up the hill. So that's where we're going now. It's all very well kept. And at this the time I visited for this video, it was uh, the dry season, so you you see the the place looking a little bit uh, drabby, but as not once the the rainy season starts, everything becomes green and uh, sprouts up and leaves all over the place. So it's a very different experience going uh, during the, the, the rainy season. I need to make another video in the rainy season, which, uh, as you might know, goes from um, around April to mid October. And uh, after that, then <laughs> things <laughs> calm down, <laughs> rain it's not rainy and uh, nature takes over no so um i'll have I have another video like that here's the top here's where people get prepared for the the, the water park they have their uh, helmets and their uh, life vests or what do you call them and, and they start off here in this green tube oh <laughs> yeah down this what were they called it the rattlesnake they called it um, let's see they mention it here okay. and it's called yes. the water side called rattlesnake yes so this is a, they have like a ba bath uh, toilets here and then there's a few uh, there's two ways down two paths down and well later on go in and check out the um, check out the the wa the water park side of things in this first part we'll go down to the to some of the resting areas that are here on the on the hill further to the west so you go down here and then to the west And for those that don't know, in Las Caletas, as I mentioned, was uh, where John Houston lived. But who is John Houston? I, I didn't know very much about him, though I had seen a few of his movies without really knowing about him. No. So um, he's one of the golden era of uh, ho Hollywood movie directors. He was um, he was from a, a, a well-known 
mm. artistic family. You know, his father was a he, he was an itinerant uh, uh, artist. He worked in what they called the Bordeville Theater, um, uh, and they would uh, move around the country with shows. You know, and um, he himself was a little bit eccentric, John Huston, and um, he had a very active and it's a multifacetic uh, life. Uh, here we can see somebody going down the uh, zip line towards the towards the sea, splash into the water. There's another one where they th with the water slide they fall on top of a pillar or something uh, in the in the ocean. So here we're going down towards this the, the resting area. Yes, and John and John Houston had a very active and and eccentric uh, life too. And at, w at some point he, he came by Puerto Vallarta in the early 50s, I think, maybe even a little earlier, wh when the town was just a little few, two, three thousand people, no? And um, he forgot about the place, no? He, he m must have been just one of many small fishing villages, no? And um, later on, in the 1960s, he was about to, he, he got in a, a screenplay by um, based on um, uh, it was a little a short story a story by Tennessee Willi William yeah. the same um, a very famous uh, author and had it had been a very um, successful Broadway show and so the, he, he they adapted it to the to to the movie a movie a movie script you know and then they, they needed to find a place to to film to shoot the movie and he it was um the the short story was um located in in acapulco and um acapulco wasn't chosen for the the movie but they they were um, there was somebody related to the production i don't remember his name right now but Guillermo Wolf, a local entrep um, entrepreneur in Puerto Vallarta, had gotten a concession for Miss Maloya to build some some uh, something in, in Miss Maloya, and so he contacted uh, John Houston and Ray Stark, that were the producers of the movie, and offered Miss Maloya as an option for uh, the location. It was a if you don't know Miss Maloya, well, it was a, it, it's a little bit further north. No, 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 not actually north. It's more to the east, northeast. It's one of the beach, the last beaches in Puerto Vallarta. And there, at the time, there were no no roads, and they 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 c could only get there by sea. When they checked the area, they liked it a lot, so they used it as the the set for the movie. The idea was then, um, which they agreed with Guillermo Wolf, mm -hmm. they would build the set a little bit stronger with better material, mm -hmm. and then they would use it after the movie for for a condo development or sort of like a villa, villas that they could then sell and uh, earn some money. On, you know? So, well, that was the plan at least. So the 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 set of the night of the iguana was not all cardboard and and uh, <laughs> light material but stronger stronger strong strongly built you know? and that that actually means that the ruins are still there most of it most of the the set itself is still there the smaller houses that they used for for um, while they were there to stay overnight those have been eaten almost all you can see that on on satellite photos that there's almost nothing left no? but the set in itself the what appears in the movie it still is it still exists rather deteriorated <laughs> deteriorated uh, uh, state but um, it's still there and it was also used in the 80s 90s uh, maybe even the 70s I don't know as a restaurant they had a what they called John Houston's Night of the Iguana restaurant, something like that. And I have some old photos of the place. So anyway, um, 
Yeah. Uh, that's how they got here. They got to Puerto Vallarta. Now they stayed in Puerto Vallarta. They would take a boat over to Miss Maloya for the shoot, the, the, the film shoot, the shooting the mm -hmm. scenes. And then some would stay over on Miss Maloya and these uh, houses that were built on the western side. And uh, others would take the speedboat back to Puerto Vallarta and stay in town. No? Uh, Lis Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Elizabeth Taylor did not, wasn't part of the movie, but came along with Richard Burton. Keep an eye on him because Ava Gardner was uh, the other, s uh, the other star of the movie, and she was known for being uh, rather, <laughs> um, what would you say, a little bit um, uncontrollable. So she came along just to make sure that Richard would uh, behave, no? And um, they stayed in town. They would stay in, in Casa Kimberly. They first started off in uh, Hotel Oceano, where the, uh, right where the lighthouse is by the Malecon. But uh, after encountering a cockroach or something, and they, they uh, threatened with, with leaving Puerto Vallarta, and then they were moved over to Kimberly, Casa Kimberly, where John Houston was renting. And he moved out so they could stay there. They actually ended up buying the place later on. But that's another story. So anyway, that's how John Houston ended, uh, came by Puerto Vallarta. And he liked it here and he stayed here. And as I mentioned, he, he arranged for this uh, Las Caletas to be a semi-permanent uh, place for, for him. No? It was a time, um, it was a time for him of change, no. He, he when he was shooting the night of the iguana, uh, John F JFK was killed, and he felt uh, felt very very shocked and, and disillusioned of being a, a U.S. citizen. So he actually renounced his uh, nationality and became an, an Irish citizen, uh, uh, an Irish man, and. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, an interesting story. So I imagine he, he, he wanted to stay around outside the States, no? As much as possible. And um, this was one of his, one of the places he stayed most when, while living outside the U.S. or in Ireland because he also had a, like a ma manor in Ireland, family, uh, something that he had... Uh, that was in the family, no? Where he stayed th also in Ireland. So, anyway, here we're going, we're returning from the, the si side trip to the water park. Although we didn't go to the water park, and that's what I noticed later on. <laughs> later in the video, we'll, we'll go back and check the, the water park side of things. So, anyway, he installed himself here in the, in the mid 70s. Before that, he lived in, in, in Puerto Vallarta, in the town itself and had uh, parties and had a lot of people over uh, to his house mm -hmm. um, including uh, actors and, and uh, writers and all kinds of um, people from the artistic world. No? I also have um, some references from Bill Reed, William Reed, that wrote a book called uh, Escape to Paradise and Mexican Odyssey, William Reed. Where he he was actually the ghost writer of John Huston's autobiography book called An Open Book, and um, there's a lot of stories there regarding John Huston and Las Caletas. It's a very interesting read, a very <laughs> educational read because you you have a hard time trying to imagine what what it was like, you no, know, their their lives and what who they were and how they how they behave, no? And it's a different world. Uh, and in a, in a sense, um, uh, a complicated world in the arts and the movies and the actors and so on. And John Huston wasn't a simple character either. Uh, so the book gets into that. A little bit of his, the later years, uh, especially the time he was in Las Caletas, which was also a sort of sort of 
what we call it a little bit strange I'd say when you look at it in detail no? but it, I won't go get into 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 that subject but you can figure uh, you can read the book and get it on online I found it on Amazon and it's a an, very interesting read uh, by William Reed R-E-E-D he has some nice photos in, with uh, John Houston and, and Angelica Angelica and uh, that were uh, that live with with uh, John in Las Caletas, and um, it's an interesting part of the story. I also read the, uh, an open book by John Houston. Um, it's also an interesting read, but it 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 is very clinical. It's like it's been polished. And when I read. Uh, William Reed's book I noticed he, he said that that in the end he wanted a very honest book but it ended up being just uh, edited down to a very clean uh, artificial uh, autobiography and I did find it a little bit tedious because it was it didn't sound fully what we say fully honest no it seemed a little bit like a Hollywood movie in itself, uh, where life is is not real. It's not reality, not the full reality. So anyway, but it's also a good book, at least to get the, to know the details of, of John Huston's life. The beach itself, I didn't have the time to enjoy it, but the the beach, I mean, they're they're very beautiful and come and relax on the hammocks and have a drink. So it. If you have, if you don't have to run around filming the, the whole the whole place, <laughs> you can enjoy a, a nice day there. There's the drinks, and they, they take care of you, and you relax, and you enjoy the the warm weather, the sun. If you like that, I don't like the sun. And the activities I went down, uh, went snorkeling was very nice. Have, have some other. I won't include them here, but there's some other shots underwater, and um, there's also the you have can swim around, go to those small pontoons or whatever you call them, floating there in the in the middle of the bay. There are a lot of places to rest in, in the shade, so it's a, a very nice trip. And if you have kids, they can go to the kids club and the adventure uh, kids adventure park while you just relax if you want to do that or do your thing no so it's um you can really ha have a good day with the family there too and there's nothing to worry about i mean no kids gonna disappear here unless they jump into the jungle but i doubt that they'll find that interesting but um it's it's a what we say very safe place to be and in general i mean all puerto vallarta is very safe but this is even more because it's there's no way to nowhere to go <laughs> and uh, as long as you know, your kids don't end up in the ocean everything should be fine and if they're in the ocean just tag along take care of them. Yeah, you can see some people just relaxing see the sun preparing to go out in the in the ocean you have your, you you have a sort of a breakfast when you, when you arrive, and then later on you have a, a lunch, and you go back home. In my case, I was just running around. I, barely, I think I barely had time to have a, a lunch. I think I didn't eat lunch. Okay, so here's a little bar. They, they can have some fruit, fruit juices, and things like that. It's cool. This is the activities beach. So anyway, Las Caletas then has a certain uh, celebrity uh, background. No? I think that helped it in, in the early years, but now when almost nobody remembers 
neither John Houston nor even Richard Burton and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor. There's very little in the newer generations uh, relate to the old history of the place, no? But it is something that's the background. I'd say the background of what Puerto Vallarta, or the, the, the reason Puerto Vallarta became so famous so fast. No? It wasn't the only reason, but it, it helped. It was like a, the starting shot, no? in 1963, when Hollywood, the, the biggest stars in Hollywood came down to Puerto Vallarta. And then the two biggest stars, the, the, the most important uh, celebrity couple in the in the that at that time and for many years before um, uh, after uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton decided to buy a house and, and stay part of the time in Puerto Vallarta there were re uh, tax reasons too that oh artists God, moved around the mm -hmm. world if they stayed less than X amount of days in whichever country they were <laughs> located in, they could avoid taxes. So uh, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor had a, a ship yeah. where they would sort of saunter around the world, uh, mainly between Europe and and uh, the States, and then uh, these trips to Vallarta, they would um, avoid staying in one location, <laughs> avoid exorbitant taxes like in England where it was 99% for, mm -hmm. for the rich so you can imagine there was an incentive to avoid you know, falling in the in the grabbers of the tax taxation system so yeah mm -hmm. 63 they arrived here it was Richard Burton, Ava Gardner mm -hmm. and um, some, uh, some other important uh, actors Plus, John Houston as the director, and Elizabeth well, Taylor as a the chaperone of Richard Burton. <laughs> no, she was actually the she was already his, his lover, and um, so they came down, and um, that was a big, a big issue. I mean, a big event, yeah, and not only was it a big event, the the movie itself, it was mostly the scandal surrounding Burton and Taylor. It was so scandalous that the local, uh, what would you call it, the local societe, the soci local society, the, the, the people that had a voice, many of them were scandalized with these decadent actors and, and so on. And uh, would have preferred they didn't come but there was a positive side to the whole thing in the end and they sort of behaved except Ava but the rest well behaved so here I, I came up again and to check out the, um, the water park yeah Ava, Ava was a little as expected a little uh, out of control I think I think, uh, well, I won't go get into that, but you can figure out, you can fi find out, and if you want, I can, you can email me and I'll send some references of, of that, talk about uh, that time. I wasn't, I wasn't there, of course, I wasn't even born, but there, there's talk of <laughs> a, a little bit of a scandal there, too, even though the rest were all very educated and civilized, no? With Sue Lyon and, and the other actresses be behaving well and so on. Mm -hmm. all very civilized here we're going down to the water f down towards the um, the water park that was a uh, the way you could go down to the, the to the snakes the rattlesnake water slide but it was closed I think that's there's a different way of getting there and I imagine it's mostly for the employees but here instead of going to the left as I did in the first part of the video here we go to the to the right and down the hill and then we're gonna get to the the, the, the different activities that are down there. Now the zip line mm -hmm. where we have the sea lions 
And they have like a waterfall too. Yeah. There's a, a new part. Uh, what's now that I was there in uh, December? Uh, what was that? Two months ago. Uh, there's a new part that they're building further to the east. Not sure what it is. It, it looked a little like uh, some other development. Might maybe scuba diving or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it, they're they're de they're developing further along the edge of the sea. We'll have to figure out what that is. Long time, but they're still building. At the time when um, when uh, the the whole night of the iguana group came along, a few years later, yes, a few years. No, it was a, more or less at this, just at that time. The whole the whole infrastructure of the town was also developed, you know, with an international airport, with uh, telephone lines, electricity, and so on. It was a little bit before, just when the city became Puerto Rico became a city officially. It, 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 it advanced enough to be able to receive all these people too. Here we can see sort of like um, these are the sea lines. <laughs> They're enjoying it. They're some themselves. It looks a little bit small though, but I imagine it's all well, uh, well designed. A lot of fishies here. They have the manta rays that swim around. Looks nice. I'd like to jump in there. Didn't have the time to jump in the water while I was there though. There's a lot of life here in the sea, in the ocean, and, and in the jungle hills. There's a lot, a lot of life, and there's a lot of nature that's untouched still. Even you have, even though you have places in here like Las Caletas now and uh, Las Animas, when you <laughs> take the the boat from Boca de Tomatlán southward, there's Long, long stretches of, but at least there's somebody in this apartment. And then there's some people that are like bouncing off this red, the red and yellow pillow. Right? Anyway, the, um, there's long stretches of, of bir what, at least what looks like virgin jungle, inaccessible, thick jungle. So that there's a lot of life in this area. Badgers, deers, ocelots, and smaller feline, <laughs> felines, no? boas, and jaguars. So it's an it's it's a nice a nice a nice place of nice place to to see and visit. No, the, the virgin areas are not accessible. Really not accessible. Uh huh. There's like a slide. So people sort of fly fly out of that. Do they fall into the water on top of that pillow? I think they fall into the water. They go that long on top of the pillow. That yellow pillow. I think they move the pillow when people use the zip line. And they put the pillow where people will fall through on, along the water slide. So the next beach along the way towards um, towards the west, west southwest, is uh, Majahuitas. Majahuitas is uh, now also part of the concession for, for Bayat Adventures. 
they have a beach club there, Majahuitas Beach Club. But Majahuitas, uh, in the time when uh, John Houston was living here, had another family, the Von Rohr family. Kathy Von Rohr uh, is an artist and she still and now lives in Puerto Vallarta. But at that time they had a, sm a small house, which is also mentioned in, in a website, www.puertovallarta.net, if you search for Majahuitas. There's a little bit of the history of the, of the Von Rohr in uh, Majahuitas, and at some point in time in 19, what was it, 1977, they came over 1976, well, 96, 1977, the Fonror uh, uh, met Archie Al uh, Arsenio Alpena, one um, a, a chef, and his wife Cindy, that had uh, arrived from from uh, California, he was a barten bartender and chef at a, a famous resort there in uh, Santa Barbara, and they came down driving, and ended up in Puerto Vallarta, and ended up in Quimix Quimixto. Yeah, they they rented a little place in Quimixto, and got to know the Von Rohr in Majahuitas, <laughs> all these small little beaches here along the way, and one day the Von Rohr, uh, Von Rohr uh, brought brought Archie over to a dinner at uh, well, a poker. They, they played poker in Las Caletas. They brought Archie over. You know, he brought Archie over for a poker, one of the poker sessions, and they got to know each other. And John Houston said, well, why don't you, I, I need somebody to make good food. I need a chef. Why don't you come over and, and work for me? You know? So that's how uh, John Houston he said, no. Well, Archie, why don't you come to work for me? I'm looking for a full-time chef for Las Caletas. And that's how uh, Archie ended up uh, working for John Houston, making wonderful food for him. And then later when uh, John Houston left Las Caletas, Archie uh, went into town and established his own restaurant, which is still there. Archie's walk. Uh, Francisca Rodriguez, the same uh, street that has the, pe the, the, the Lo Playa Los Muertos Pier. There's the Archie's Walk. It's a great restaurant. I've been there quite a few times. I always enjoy the meals and uh, the desserts. Everything's good there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great restaurant. And um, so there's a relationship you know, between the past. He's, he, he's no longer alive anymore, but his son and wife uh, minister, uh, uh, take care of the of the restaurant so there's a connection still uh, between uh, from the restaurant to Archie to John Houston to Las Caletas uh, there's a little bit of history a little a, sm a small iguana wasn't it? it's not the typical iguana it's a little bit more uh, what do you call it? stylized not so so bulky and clunky as the uh, normal Iguanas. Oh, there we go. There it is. So anyway, here we're going back. It's it's not the best. <laughs> sorry, it's not the best uh, version of, of uh, Las Caletas. I, I would have preferred to have a, a more comprehensive and better organized uh, trip of Las Caletas. But at least you get an idea of what it is, how it is, how is the, the, the layout, and what you can see there. Of course, uh, Vallarta Adventures will have a much more concise and better edited and better shot movie of Las Caletas, but here you can see the real life version, no? <laughs> Without too much uh, Photoshop or editing, uh, set up uh, sets and uh, people acting out, no? This is how I found it. At least. And it's more. It's closer to what you will see there too when you go. The only big difference, as I mentioned, is if you go in the rainy season after the rainy season or in the dry season, where I was visiting. This was a dry season. Huh? When it's humid, it's a. Uh, it's quite a. Looks quite different. At least with the vegetation. So anyway, the RT. John Houston from Rome 
just like uh, John Huston, the front rower, were not well. In the case of John Huston, he left the front rower, had a, a different experience with the Chacala community. They actually were not allowed to renew their lease on the land and were almost thrown out. It must have been traumatic. The Chacala Indians, they have, they don't have a very good reputation when it comes to treating and uh, behaving with, with, uh, with the tenants or the leasers. No? Yeah, it's hard. It's a, a different culture. People misunderstand each other maybe. There's the language, there's the, the traditions and so on. So it's not a surprise they had uh, conflicts. So anyway, we were going back over the hanging bridge and it was time for lunch. So I think I had a lunch, a small lunch in the, uh, around, I, I think we arrived around 11, 10, 11, 10, 10 or 11, and we ended up leaving around 3 or 4, from what I remember. I'd have to check my you know, the photographs and have a better and have better control of the time. But those are things you, you can ask before taking the tour. So here we're, there's quite a, the, you can't see much people now. <laughs> They're all eating. <laughs> They've all gone to lunch. And I found a sort of, I was, why, why are there so few people? But it was that. You know, people had all been uh, over eating lunch while I was walking around in the area. Now that COVID is, I think, on its way out, be nice to visit these areas again without masks and distancing and stuff like that. It's it's a place where you want just to relax and not have to worry about anything. So it would be much better now. <coughs> Puerto Vallarta is a I, I imagine like most of the world uh, soon going back to normal. So it might be the time to enjoy in February. This is still high season in Puerto Vallarta, and also in a point in time where where the most of the vegetation is green. I'd say around April, March, April, then things start drying up, and things change, in, and colors change. Now start getting sort of dusty and more earth color, you know, dusty and. So I think it's a, it's a nice place to visit from what would be say July July starts getting green and then October stops raining so <coughs> from November December until around the end of February March I think this these places are very green looks nicer than when I visited in this video. No. This was uh, May. May or maybe the beginning of June? Ah, it was the 2nd of June. 2nd of June. So it was just before the rains started. I remember the 8th of June that it started raining. Of course it takes some time before everything becomes green again. But This was right the end of the rainy season. I mean the dry season. It had been very dry too. So everything was, all the leaves were gone. <laughs> yeah, nobody here. They're all eating. When I went by here. There was a lot of people sitting around. Huh? Maybe a few over there. Mm -hmm. Swimming in the water. Enjoying the beach for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some photos on the cameras. There's nobody here. So anyway, it's, an, it's an a recommendable trip, go from, uh, either as a couple or as a youngster. And 
even as I say with family too there's something for everyone there the trip is fun on the way and back I mean the, the sh on the ship it's a it's a catamaran catamaran so it's uh, r relatively stable so it's a it's a trip everyone will enjoy have some fun dance on the ship have some s uh, enjoy some sports while you're here It'll, it'll, nobody's going to complain, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to shoot. Now I want to go down to the beach. I think that should maybe have eliminated some parts here of the video. I'm not sure where I'm going. <laughs> but anyway. The idea is that it's almost unedited, an unplugged version of Las Caletas. The water's clear, there's a lot of fish. I saw a lot of fish when I was snorkeling. There's, there was an abundance of some little, some little sea life thing. It was like full of larva. Well, it sounds a little scary, but it was these little small swimming things in like clouds under the water. Not sure what uh, what uh, species that was, but it was very very uh, interesting now to see so much life. Small fish, colorf colorful fish, small uh, bigger ones that go around in, in groups. It was, a, it was a nice swim, not only here but also in Mahawitas. So there's a lot of life, a lot of things going on in the sea. As mentioned, also in the jungle, but. That's not something you experience because you you're kept you keep to the paths and you don't venture out in the middle to the middle of the jungle. But I imagine at night things really pick up. And I have been I've overnighted on Dil in Dilapa and the life at night is incredible. There's all kinds of birds and frogs and noises and crabs coming out of the, s of the ground and bats flying around and bugs of all sizes and types of course well the times I've been there I've not had much trouble with mosquitoes and things but there must be some too but in general we're all very civilized I had a good experience there's a lot of ants and big ants and uh, yeah, that I've heard they have scorpions I haven't seen them but you have to be careful. So there's some that are not, <laughs> not uh, what do you say? That can be harmful. But it's a matter of being careful. And um, you know, the, the abundance of life. Ah, even fireflies I've seen. That time when I was in Yalapa, there was fireflies and bats. While I was uh, soaking in, a, in Lagunita Yalapa's little uh, pool, it's made between some boulders. There was this electric fireworks in the distance it was the rainy season and the bat would come round and drink some water off the top of the pool and meanwhile there were some fireflies and fireflies arriving like small floating dots you know, neon lights it was so cool it was beautiful relaxing there was yeah, those are the memories. Those are the memories you you cherish and you know, that follow you along. And you don't forget, never forget. <laughs> so I imagine here at night you can have a, a similar experience if you if there's areas that are quiet. No? So here I'm returning towards the, the restaurant area and I think I was going to try to get some lunch. I do remember the food wasn't wonderful, it was alright, I mean, it's the, the food at night is much better. During the day it's more like snacks, and it's not very elaborate what I remember at least. Maybe I just arrived at 
late to the lunch. <laughs> I think it was like a buffet or something. But it's not it, it's not something I remember well. So that means it wasn't in anything incredible. So if you if you do do the trip in the day, do remember to bring a. I, I brought along a towel. Bring your swim swimsuit if you're planning to jump into the ocean. Uh, they recommend a biodegradable sunscreen. And if you're in the colder season, like uh, in December, January, mostly January, February, bring a little light jacket or light sweater for the trip back. It can become windy. No? And if you need it, a hat is not a bad idea either. Here we're back by the, the original living room, I think. This one. They have the John Houston Hall. One of, the, one of those sculptures. We had the breakfast here on the, on the right. There's flamingos here on the, le on the left side of the bridge. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to comment and share it. And I hope you enjoy the next one too. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when the new videos are published. It's normally once a week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.